Welcome back to Distant Signal and another video. This is entry number 33 in the 90 day vlog marathon for the run up to Changeling's crowdfunding campaign. Uh, some good news, met with uh, the storyboard artist, Neil DeMonte last night. Uh, Neil and I have worked before together on some past projects and he is an incredible storyboard artist and also comic book artist. You should check out his Clan of the Vein. Uh, it's on Amazon, I think. I'll put a link uh, below to that. And yeah, we, we had a good productive meeting. I've got to board out all of the shots for the, uh, the special effects scenes. There are two ways that I know how to do or to orchestrate and compose in advance all of my shots. There is the storyboard method. You draw, you know, little rectangle inside the frame. You put your scene. Or the, way, the other way that I really like to do it is by taking my camera out and actually shooting the shot that I want, if possible, in the location or a similar location to where I'm going to be shooting on the lens. I, I mark down the, the exposure. I try to replicate what I'm thinking for lighting as best I can. And that way I can do, I call them photo boards. And I'll put a link down below to my set for I Love You. And that is a very cost-effective way. I mean, it literally cost me zero dollars to do, I think, 56 shots that were perfectly illustrative to my DP, Michael Ojeda, for I Love You. And, you know, I sent him the photo boards and he looked at it and said, I understand everything you want to do here. Um, and we even knew the lens to shoot on and everything. It was like all, it was done all in advance. And so it really saves you a lot of time uh, when you're going to be shooting if you do the storyboards or the photo boards in advance. Uh, storyboards cost a lot of money, if, especially if you uh, can't draw. So if you want to keep your costs down, you go with the photo boards, uh, and then uh, you arrange them and, and put whatever information you want, just like you would on a normal storyboard. But with special effects, I can't, I can't illustrate enough uh, with just a photograph of an empty frame. Even with actors, I, I would have to replicate the makeup I was thinking uh, in order to get what I wanted. So I've got to storyboard the special effects bits. Uh, and that'll serve a couple of purposes. Uh, first, it'll serve as a very clear in indicator of what I want for each shot. I'll be able to more accurately budget out how much the scenes will cost. Uh, I I'll be able to budget out the time that it takes to to do each effect and if they're possible. Because I like to shoot for the moon. First, The first shot list, first set of storyboards, shoot for the moon. And then as we go further with discussions, especially with Neil, who's very, very familiar with special effects, we'll talk about ways of maybe doing it better or simplifying things a little bit here there to uh to bring the cost down maybe i don't need the 23 shots that i've already planned and each includes a, a special effect of some kind and that is more than i actually thought it would be um and so i realized that i'm gonna have to go through and whittle this way way down so but because there's so much information that's required for the special effect like how i want it to look where is it it's going to be placed in the neck is there going to be movement? I can illustrate um, the fact that, you know, there's slime happening or steam happening. I can illustrate everything with precision. And uh, that's the first purpose for that, so that we can all get a very clear picture of what I want to capture. And the second is, I think, that they make a really great addition to the crowdfunding perks. Neil's going to draw these in a much larger format. So we're going to looking at, you know, I don't know, eight inches, something like that, maybe about seven, maybe at seven inches diagonally across so that they will make really great perks for the uh, crowdfunding. So, um, and then Neil offered to do a lithograph of one of the frames. So that'd be really, really cool where you can backlight this storyboard and it'll uh, reveal this sort of inverted shadow uh, image. It's really beautiful. So that's really neat. So we'll have not only Neil's storyboards for a perk, but also a lithograph. And, um, but it's going to cost money and it really sucks as I'm trying to save money right now as I'm working on this TV show. Uh, but so it pains me to have to part with it, but I think I might have to, because if I don't do it now, it's going to get really sloppy. If we do end up raising all the money that, um, we need for changelings, um, you know, I don't want to waste that. And I, I feel like if I don't do this prep work now, uh, the money that I do get will probably be spent more poorly than if I had done the prep work in advance. So it's important to do. It's a, it's a really important step. Um, it'll make me think really clearly about what I want. And it already has. I've, I've got this scene 80% done today. I'm hoping to finish the rest of it tonight and tomorrow. And then I'll have the special effects all uh, listed out, all the shots listed out. And then uh, 
I'll send it off to Neil. We'll talk about it again, and we'll talk about the shots. And if, if there's anything that can be improved upon or, or removed, like maybe he sees a redundancy, something we don't need to, we don't really need. It's possible. I do tend to over compose a scene. There's definitely going to be a couple shots in there that I don't really need. So uh, the, once that discussion happens, then we'll, we'll move forward with the actual storyboards. I'm hoping we can do this in a day or two. No more than that. Um, can't afford it. In other news, the uh, script got rewritten again. Uh, I'm really trying to figure out how to orient the characters in a, in a closer way to the feature itself. And so I'm having to go through every line, like, does this really represent the person that I've created for the feature here? Because I, I do want practice at at living in the character skins and in their minds and trying to figure out uh, wh- how they would respond to each other. So that's been uh, a lot of fun. And I've been, it's, it's given me an opportunity to really work on uh, the Fiona character of the story. She's just the friend of June, who's the antagonist of the story, or sorry, the, the protagonist of the short story. And... Um, it's giving me a chance to work on her. I felt like when I when I worked, her, most of her lines were sort of just banal questions, like "Are you okay?" or "What's wrong with you?" or "Where are we going?" "Where are we going?" or "What are we doing?" And uh, I realized that she's just not much of a character, so I'm going through all of her lines and I'm reworking all of them. I'm trying to give them a relationship, um, and uh, and so and so the the script is improving. It's really changing the relationship a lot. I've also added the tear through it, so there's this sort of omnipresent. Um, force. This, this is omnipresent image in the story now of the tear sort of hanging in the skyline to, to really make the whole thing feel otherworldly. Uh, I'm excited to bring that to the screen. I think that'll be, look really cool. Uh, and I think that it'll just be really fun to see this weird thing hanging in the sky, this tear in the fabric of space time. Space time. Space time. So that's it for this evening. I've got uh, more to do. I've got to try to get these these last few shots uh, listed out and move forward with storyboards uh, in the, you know in the next week or so. All right, have a good night, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only two dollars a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.